Just out of curiosity, have you ever thought about living in Alaska in an off-grid home? Well, this one might be for you. Just imagine living in an off-grid home 15 minutes from Willow, Alaska, one half mile from the park's highway. According to the seller, there is direct access to trails right next to the home for mushing, snow machining, and cross-country skiing. This is coming in from the entryway. From the entryway, we enter the home and are greeted with beautiful tongue and groove. That nice Alaska rustic feel. We've got a blazing stove that can heat the whole home, even at 30 below. High vaulted ceilings, lots of natural light. On the main level, there's a bedroom that has that morning sunshine to wake you up. And we have full bathroom. The refrigerator and the stove are both run off of propane from an exterior propane tank plumbed in from the crawl space. So even if there is no electricity, they will continue to work. Located in the corner is the wash machine, which is powered by electricity. So yeah. 3,000 watt inverter. 3,000 watt inverter. There's two batteries underneath. And then you have your monitoring system. It shows you the level. And then we have our, our control panel here where you would turn on the inverter if you wanted to power the house off it, but it's going to be, it's going to be too much. To, basically the generator's running, so it doesn't. Okay. So this only works when the generator is it's not, off. is off. Yeah, we have a, there's a okay. control panel in the back, so when the generator's running, that gives power to the house. When the generator shuts off, the uh -huh. inverter system kicks on. Okay. The, the Arctic entry's heated? The Arctic entry's heated with the in-floor heat. The bathroom's heated, and it's even heated under the tub. About that. So, so the wiring is set up in a couple different ways. Why don't you explain that to me, Steve? Well, it was all professionally wired by an electrician from Wasilla. When he wired it as a new construction house, we had a DC wire put in as well as the AC wire. So when the generator is off and the inverter is off, you still have lights that are powered off the batteries. So if you had a total system failure where your generator wasn't working, your inverter wasn't working, but you were still connected to the batteries, you would have lights in the house. Okay, and you've got those in various places and lights like that that are connected to that Probably system. Only twelve of them, or a little bit more than a dozen throughout the house. Okay. This propane heater is a backup to the hydronic wood-fired boiler and the Blaze King. So we've got a wide open space up here. I think, Steve, you were saying the, the thought behind the space was you could put a separation wall in here and make two, two other bedrooms? If you wanted to, you could put a separation wall here and make this an isolated bedroom. The nice thing with having it open is you get sunrise through the window on your left, sunset through the window on your right here. So by having it open, I, I didn't block the sunset or sunrise from either side.
The heated garage also has a large loft area that is accessed by the ladder. You can see in the corner part of the hydronic heating system. So, Steve, tell me how this works. Uh, so this is an outdoor wood-fired boiler system. It's connected to the house and the garage with hydronic lines approximately four feet under the ground. Um, there's glycol-based fluid in there, so it does not freeze. Even in 30 below, if it's not heated, it will not freeze. This starts the same way you would start a wood stove in your house. You just start a simple fire inside it. <clears throat> Once the fire starts going, you turn on the, the blower and you turn on the pumps. The pumps circulate the fluid through the boiler. As it heats, it re-enters the house and it powers the hot water and it also heats the in-floor heat system throughout the house and the in-floor heat system throughout the garage. Okay. Each wood shed holds approximately three to four cord of wood if stacked properly. So you can get six to eight cord of wood in the two wood sheds, which is plenty for the winter. Okay, so the other wood shed is just to the left of this one. And if you were gonna run this full time, um, uh, all year, not use the wood stove and just use the uh, wood-fired boiler, um, how how much could you go through as far as cords of wood? I'd say approximately you can go through eight cord if you were going to use the boiler primarily without the wood stove inside. 